Hello crafty friends, welcome to today's Pigment Powder 101 video. This is going to be the last video in this series. If you want to see the rest of the videos, check out the playlist that's linked up in the eye and in the video description. Today we're going to be looking at how to use pigment powders with embossing folders. This is the embossing folder we're going to be working with today, Vesson Creative. Obviously you use whatever embossing folder you like. I picked this one up on Amazon and it makes this beautiful patchwork quilt pattern. So the first thing we're going to do is make our own gilding waxes. These are the two commercially available gilding waxes that I have. We've got Sizzix Luster Wax in rose gold and it's a beautiful rose gold coppery colour and you can pick some up on a brush or some other applicator and brush it gently across an embossed pattern and it brings out the pattern giving everything it touches a rose gold luster. And this one is White Fire Treasure Gold Non-Tarnishing Wax Gilt. And this one I picked up at an art shop. I think I got, where did I get this one? I think I got that at the range. This one is at my local independent art shop. And it, again, you can brush it on and it gives a beautiful luster. This one does say apply with finger or soft cloth buff to luster finish. So I suppose technically you can use your finger. You get a different effect. But you end up with a, a gold finger. Gold finger. But these are the ones I've made myself with pigment powders. This one I made with pixie powder, rich gold, and you can pick up some, smush it on the mat a bit to, to coat my finger, and I can rub that across there, and it gives you a nice luster and brings out the pattern. This one I made with, I think it was a prism powder. So again, you can brush that on, use a brush, use your finger. And this one I made with a luscious powder. And I'm just gently brushing over the pattern. I'm not pressing down. It, my finger is just glancing over the top of the pattern. So none of these homemade ones give that very metallic luster, but they still give you some shimmer and shine with some colour. So I'll show you how I made them. This is what I've been using to make my own gilding or luster wax, and it's hand poured beeswax, wood polish and treatment. And it is made of 100% pure organic British beeswax and olive oil with some organic sweet orange essential oil. And it says it's non-toxic, biodegradable, biodegradable and environmentally friendly and made from sustainable beeswax. So it's an all round good choice, I think. And all I do with this is take out a chunk, pop it in one of these little screw top whoops, pots no put the right lid on and smush it around a bit to make it a bit more stirrable and if you hold it in your hand a bit it will warm and slightly soften and then you take some of your pigment powder I'm going to use teal luscious powder and carefully, ideally, I would use a cocktail stick, but my pot of cocktail sticks is not within reach. So I'm just going to stir it in carefully with my palette knife. And once you've stirred it in, if you think it needs a bit more 
pigment powder you can always add some more so there we have some gilding wax made with teal luscious powder and our beeswax furniture polish and again I can just gently go over my pattern my embossed pattern and bring out the raised pattern so these ones I made a couple of weeks ago and they're still in exactly the same state so I think these will keep for ages I don't think there's any reason why they will go off or go bad I do know that indigo blue do something called gilding gum which you can use to make gilding wax with your luscious powders or other pigment powders so if you're interested in that do check out their website not sponsored by the way and i'm sure other manufacturers of pigment powders do something similar to that some kind of waxy gum based thing that you can turn into gilding wax but for my purposes this does the trick and i'm sure you'll be able to source something similar wherever you are in the world so another thing you can do with your embossing folders is spray them with your DIY shimmer spray that you've made from your pigment powders. So you can spray them like that. Give them a good coating. And then pop in some card. Squish it down. Run that through your embossing folder. And you get this lovely distress look with all that mica and colour showing up on this black background. Now let's see what it looks like on a white background. And there again you get a lovely shimmery distressed looking background with lots of colour and lots of shimmer and shine. You could run that through again so that it picks up whatever is left and you get a much more subtle effect but it's very shimmery and shiny. So there we go, there are those three. So that's spritzing your embossing powder. So now I'm going to get a bit of Victorian Velvet Distress Oxide and sprinkle on a bit of Cosmic Shimmer Pixie Powder. This is White Pearl Mixer. And I'm going to take a flat blending sponge and give that a good mix around to get that white powder mixed in. And now I've got a brayer here and I'm going to pick up some of this shimmery ink and roll it over my embossing folder. Pop a bit of paper in there, run that through the die cutting machine. And there we have a beautiful pink and shimmery embossed image it's a lot cleaner than using the spray and while i've got my brayer out i'm going to do some heat embossing with my embossing folder and pigment powder so i'm just going to treat this with a bit of anti-static powder also known as corn flour or you can use talcum powder and then i'm going to brush that off with microfiber cloth that should make sure that everything is nice and dry and clean and then i'm going to use some re-inker this is versamark re-inker but you use whatever embossing ink you've got i'm gonna pick this up with my brayer get a good coat and then run that over this side of my embossing folder Now I'm going to put that through my cattle bug and this is my homemade embossing powder which I made using clear embossing powder and teal or no green green luscious powder I think or it might have been teal one well, no it's green definitely green and there's a whole video on how to make your own embossing powders with pigment powders so check that out This 
this is all cold and set so I can take a clean microfiber cloth and brush off any excess pigment that might still be stuck to the paper. And there you have a beautiful shimmery green heat embossed and dry embossed pattern. Obviously if you brayer embossing ink onto the other side of the embossing folder you'll get the reverse of this image so the big squares will get the embossing ink and the little dots for example will remain the colour of the paper so you can do this on white paper or any colour paper really. So another technique is just to put on some pigment powders to your embossing folder so I've got a bit of Raspberry Jam Luscious Powder and a bit of, what we got here? Crushed Violet, Crushed Velvet, no, Crushed Velvet Pigment Powder, Luscious Powder, and sort of brush those around a bit, get them to spread out a bit, maybe go down the, the wells or not. You don't have to brush them, you could just leave them as they are. And then take a spray of water and give it a mist and that will activate the binder, activate the pigment and get it to smush around. And then you can pop your card in and run that through the die cutting machine. There we have another lovely smushy distressed background and again you could run that through for a more subtle effect. So that was the first one where it picked up most of the colour and mica and that's the second one with a really gentle, subtle, purpley, magenta colouring. And another way to use your embossing folders is to simply colour some card with your pigment powders, dry it and then run it through your die cutting machine with your embossing folder. So these are paints that I made with my various pigment powders. There is a video, the first one in the series perhaps, I think, in which I talk about how to make and use paints from pigment powders. So now I'm going to dry that with my hair dryer and then run it through my cuttle bug with the embossing folder. So there we go, a somewhat unusual looking bit of paper, but you get the picture. You can colour your paper with pigment powders, however you like, and then run it through with an embossing folder. And don't forget, with embossed images like this, you can take a nail buffer or some fine grain sandpaper and go over without pressing too hard, the raised portion, and you can sand off the top layer of colour, and that will help bring out the pattern even more. And you can combine your techniques by say getting some gilding wax that you've made with maybe a gold, and just gently brushing it over your raised portion to add a, a subtle hint of gold or whatever colour you choose. So those are all the embossing folder techniques that I can think of right now. There may be more and if there are, I'll do some more videos to add on to the end of this series at some point in the future. Same goes for all the techniques. If you've got a pigment powder technique that hasn't popped up in one of these videos, uh, do let me know and I will maybe incorporate it into a future video with full credit to you, of course. But I'm really liking these two, so I think I'm going to make a card using these. So this is the one I did with the embossing powder, and this is the one I did by brayering on Victorian velvet with a bit of the white mixer mixed in. So I'm going to make a very quick card 
by die cutting this tag from both of my panels. So I've got a five by seven inch card blank here and it's got a slightly smaller panel stuck on the front, smooth white cardstock. And I'm going to take my pink tag, my Victorian velvet tag, and add it flat, I think, on there, like that, at a slight angle. And my green heat embossed tag, I'm going to stick up on some foam tape. And I'm going to pop that on there also at a jaunty angle, perhaps even more jaunty. So for the front tag, I'm just going to add a bit of embroidery thread. So that it's got a bit of a tail. I'll chop that so it's nice and even. That's a nice little bit of texture. So for my sentiment, I've chosen a congratulations word. That I die cut from that purple panel that we made and I've also cut the shadow out of white cardstock just to help it stand out so I'm going to pop my congratulations in some glue and then stick it on its shadow I'm just going to pop a couple of bits of craft tape, foam tape, under the end of the word so that it doesn't flap around. And I'm going to use my circle die to make some faux enamel dots. So we've got a bunch of circles there in the same purple. And we'll just pop those on in a few little groupings, three little groupings. And to give them a bit of gloss and a bit of dimension, as usual, I'm just gonna add some glossy accents on top. So there we go, that is this card, this video, and this series finished for now. As I say, there may be more in the future if I think up or come across some other pigment powder techniques that are worth sharing. If you'd like to see more from me, do hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. I'd love it if you could like my videos, share them on social media, leave me a comment, and I will see you back here very soon. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.